House of the Dragon is a prequel to the beloved story that we find in Game of Thrones. House of the Dragon covers events that are found in George R. R. Martin's book, Fire and Blood, which details the downfall of dragons in Westeros. The second season has just begun with the continuation of the cliffhanger of events that were left at the end of season one. Personally, I have never read any of George R.R. R. Martin's books, but I really do want to. I know a little bit about what we can expect from the show based on context clues from the main Game of Thrones show, but I am really excited to be going into this story blind and not really knowing definitively what is going to be happening. The title of episode one is called A Son for a Son. Obviously, this is in regards to when Aemon Targaryen lost control of his dragon, Bagar, and ended up killing Lucerys Valerian as well as his dragon, Arax. Going into the episode, we can infer that Rhaenyra will want justice for her son, thus the title, A Son for a Son. In the first shot of the episode, we see a raven flying through the woods, bringing the news of Lucerys's death to his brother Jace, who is currently making contact at Winterfell. The opening line comes from Lord Cregan Stark. Duty is sacrifice, it eclipses all things, even blood. All men of honor must pay its price. We learn about the duty of the men in the north and how, thanks to Torin Stark, they offer one in ten men to serve as members of the Night's Watch on the wall. When it comes to the north, they tend to look at the Night's Watch as more of an honor and less of a prison sentence. To these people in the north, it is in direct contrast to how the rest of Westeros views the wall. In Game of Thrones, we learn that the Night's Watch is a place for criminals and bastards alike to find a new home and escape the life they lead in the current world. We also hear the iconic line, Winter is coming. No! Referencing the Long Night and the events of the White Walkers, which would take place in Game of Thrones. We get an interesting line from Jace as he tells Cregan Stark, the current Lord of Winterfell, it pleases me to think that only a century ago, our ancestors treated in this very place. Cregan Stark then responds by saying, you at least had the mercy not to threaten me with your dragon. This is a callback to when Aegon the Conqueror used fire and blood to take Westeros and used fear to rule the kingdom with his dragons. This is a sentiment that seems to have carried bitter feelings even a hundred years later. Jace pleads his case saying that the unity that has been held together for the past hundred years is on the brink of falling apart and war is coming and the Blacks need the support of the North to help keep Rhaenyra's claim to the Iron Throne. We then get some beautiful cinematography where Jace stands out at the wall and is told that when King Jaehaerys and his wife came to the wall, their dragons wouldn't even fly beyond. Again, a reference to the long night and the darkness that lies beyond the wall, which is further fleshed out in Game of Thrones, the main show. However, even though the Starks do not want to give up men, they would rather keep them at the wall. The Starks are a house of honor and agree to send a couple thousand graybeards or older soldiers to fight for Rhaenyra. Back at Dragonstone, we learn that Rhaenyra has been missing because she is out searching for the body of Luke. It is mentioned that if she can find his remains, it will give her the closure she needs to move on. Damon wants to take Rhaenys Valerian and head towards the capital, King's Landing, to take out Aemond and Vagar, partly as a way to get revenge for Luke's death, but also Vagar, being the biggest dragon in Westeros, is going to be one of their biggest obstacles in the war. And if they have any chance of winning, he needs to be taken out. Rhaenys refuses, saying that they should give Rhaenyra time to grieve, as well as time for her dragon to rest. She also doesn't take orders from Daemon. She says she takes orders from the queen, Rhaenyra. Back at King's Landing, we see the King's Guard and all the soldiers. They're now draped in green and are very on edge. We see the scorpion weapon which is one of the methods of killing dragons. We do see this happen to one of Daenerys' dragons in Game of Thrones. 
King Aegon makes his first appearance in the series where he comes into his children's room looking for his son and heir, Jaehaerys, wanting to take him to the small council. Queen Helena then mentions that she is afraid of the rats. The theme of Helena from season one was her particular way to gain prophecy from the creepy crawlies of the earth, things like spiders, rats, and bugs. This is going to be foreshadowing for what is to come later in the episode, which involves the rat catchers. We do see that the former queen, Alicent, has begun having an affair with the head of the king's guard, Sir Criston, which is an interesting plot point for this season, considering how last season he was angry about losing his honor with Rhaenyra, and even angrier when she refused to run away with him. But now it appears that honor means very little with Alicent and Sir Criston. Alicent does mention to Sir Criston that we cannot again, which is another foreshadowing moment in the episode where we learn what the consequences of her and Sir Criston fooling around actually are. In the small council, we learn that Alicent has been sending letters to Rhaenyra, apologizing for the death of Luke. My letters to Rhaenyra, has there been any answer? An apology for her dead son? She seems shocked that Rhaenyra hasn't replied. We also get the feeling in this small council meeting that King Aegon is completely uninterested in what's going on and doesn't really care to come up with any solution. We do not care. We also learn that because of the efforts of Driftmark, that King's Landing has now been put in a tight spot due to their continuous blockades. This is because Driftmark and House Valerian are the masters of sea and have the largest naval forces in the area. Aegon and Aemond want to move quickly. They want to use their dragons to take the Riverlands and burn the Sea Snakes blockade. However, the High Towers and Alicent stress caution and patience, which does not sit well with King Aegon at all. We then cut to one of the most emotional scenes in the entire show. Rhaenyra finds the cloak of Luke and the wing of his dragon, Arax. She cries out in pain and suffering, and her dragon does as well showing us that the dragons somehow share the emotions that their riders are having. This could help explain why Aemond was unable to control his dragon due to his anger and lust for revenge. We then cut back to King's Landing, where King Aegon is meeting with those who petition him. We do get to see more of Aegon's personality now, and how he wants to rule, and the kind of king he wants to be. As a man petitions him for his flock back, and Aegon wants to return them, However, we see that Aegon's not really calling the shots around here. It's his grandfather, Lord Hightower, who steps in and tells him that the dragons need that flock if they are to win the war. We see Alicent and her father have a heart-to-heart -heart moment where she asks him to stop undermining her and that if he keeps doing it, soon none of her children will even listen. I do think Alicent wants to be good and believes she is a moral person but I think she has spent her entire life living up to the expectations and standards that her father gives her. It ultimately causes her to come off as the villain. In a way, the audience can kind of feel bad for her because she has never really gotten to live the life she wanted to live. Whereas in contrast, Rhaenyra had the freedom to live as she pleased with little consequence. Lord Hightower tells his daughter the path to victory is now one of violence. Thanks to the Sea Snakes blockade, Damon is able to find an old acquaintance known as the White Worm from season one. We learned in season one that she provided valuable information to Otto Hightower for the right price. Damon wishes for her to be branded a traitor, but recognizes that she may have information he needs to infiltrate King's Landing and potentially kill Aemond. Queen Rhaenyra has four lines in the entire episode. When she returns to the small council, she says plainly and simply, I want Aemond Targaryen. Damon, out of love, revenge, and possibly duty to his wife, he offers freedom to his old acquaintance so that he can go to King's Landing and kill Aemond. We then see another heart-wrenching scene where Jace faces his mother, Rhaenyra, and reports his success of securing the loyalty of Winterfell 
and the veil. The words choke in his mouth as he breaks down crying and embraces his mother. We then cut to the heart-wrenching funeral of Luke as his belongings are burnt, and we realize that what Craig and Stark said at the beginning rings true. Duty is a sacrifice, and all men of honor must pay its price. In season one, Luke was very hesitant to go, but it was his mother and his older brother that told him it was his duty to defend her birthright and secure the Baratheon allegiance. This guilt will likely hang over Rhaenyra and Chase for the remainder of the series. Damon manages to sneak his way into King's Landing, where he hires two individuals who are known as Blood and Cheese. These individuals infiltrate the castle as rat catchers. Because of their ability to catch rats, they know the tunnels of the Red Keep very well. Damon hires them specifically to kill Aemon Targaryen. We are led to believe that if they couldn't find Aemon Targaryen, then it would be a son for a son. Eventually, Blood and Cheese find themselves in the children's room of Helena and Aegon. Helena pleads with them not to kill her children. She offers her necklace. They pull the necklace off and reply with, that's not a son. She very quickly and surprisingly points out her son with little resistance. They proceed to fulfill their quest, a son for a son, as Helena grabs her daughter and makes her way to Allison's room, where, surprise, surprise, she's in the midst of embracing Sir Kristen. The death of her son is a consequence of Sir Kristen leaving his post to be with Allison. The episode then ends. One big question I continued to have as the episode ended was why Helena was so quick to sacrifice her son and save her daughter. I think she did not want her son to be king. I think that deep down, or through some kind of revelation, she knows that being king is a worse fate than death. And so, she would rather blood and cheese take a son for a son than eventually having her son sit on the Iron Throne. I think it's going to be very hard for this show to ever redeem Sir Kristen or Alicent, because if he was at his post, he could have prevented the death of this child. Time will tell as to what happens to these characters, but I'm hoping they meet an awful end. This was such a great opening to season two of The House of the Dragon. It quickly kept up with the pace of the season one finale and kept me invested the entire time. The cinematography was amazing. The acting was amazing. Amazing. The set designs and costumes were amazing, and the dragons are amazing. It just feels so good to finally have a show like this back. It truly feels like we are back to the golden era of television. As far as predictions for the next episodes go, I think it's going to be pretty obvious that King Aemon is going to be very angry about the death of his heir. He will want to bring fire and blood to Rhaenyra, which will ultimately push the idea of patience out the window. I also think Rhaenyra is going to be very angry with Daemon because she doesn't want the death of a child to weigh heavily on her and hurt her chance at obtaining the Iron Throne. She really only wanted justice for Luke. I wonder if Aemond begins to feel any sort of guilt for killing Luke in the first place, especially since it ultimately led to the death of Aegon and Helena's children. Or perhaps this may fuel Aemond's anger even more, and cause him to become even more reckless. We learn in this episode that the key portion that either side needs is the Riverlands. There is a good chance we could see armies being marched and gathered on both sides to take the Riverlands. I don't know if we'll be seeing any dragon combat yet, as I think both sides wish to keep their dragons close to home to act as a deterrent for their enemies. It appears that episode one of this season has things ramping up quickly, and I couldn't be more excited. If you like this video, please leave it a like subscribe to the channel to see more content like this, and let me know in the comments if you are liking season two of House of the Dragon so far. Let me know if you were surprised by the death of Aegon's heir. As always, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.